Okay, great. Uh, so we are a team, aha, an art and humanities adventure. So we started off with this problem where researchers in the arts and humanities can basically greatly benefit from research software uh, expertise. Um, often they have like little to no background in software engineering. And our goal was to try and make learning about software development fun and accessible for these people. So our idea was to create a virtual escape room where they can learn some key concepts from research software development while they're solving puzzles. Um, so the aim of this is that they basically look for information and try and find resources that uh, talk about software development practices and RSE concepts um, on their own. And they use these to construct the answers to like little puzzles on their way to uh, yeah, solving the escape room, basically. Uh, so our team was uh, a bit of a mix. So we had uh, one team member who's from an art and humanities background um, who had no software development experience. Um, we had three RSEs, uh, one librarian who had a lot of RSE experience. Um, and uh, I had some virtual escape room experience in the past, so brought some of that with me, which I wasn't expecting to ever contribute to something <laughs> like this, but uh, yeah, that was good. Um, Though I, I guess a few of us had like bits and pieces of uh, experience uh, on web development and things like that, but uh, none of us were our like web developers or experts. So uh, yeah, we kind of had to tie, uh, tie this together with bits and pieces of our knowledge. And um, so here, here's a group photo of us here. Um, so how did we work? So we started off the day by kind of coming up with a list of kind of like prototype tasks, I guess, because we didn't really know what technology we wanted to use. Uh, we kind of had to decide on a few different things to try. And so a few, uh, we broke into like smaller groups and tried out different things. And um, yeah, so throughout the day, we kind of had lots of check-in points where we evaluated our progress and uh, decided whether we would uh, pursue a different avenue or uh, basically just stop any future development and try uh, try to just polish it as much as possible. Um, uh, we used get a project board to track progress. I uh, thought this worked really well. Um, and uh, we used Slack just for sharing links and things like that. Most of the time we were on, uh, on Zoom, so we were able to communicate pretty well through that as well. Um, yeah, so basically just ask for help on small, small issues and if people had time between other tasks, kind of uh, offered to help. And we also managed to get in a lunch break, which was really, really nice. <laughs> and so yeah, we tried a few different technologies. Um, and then we kind of decided that none, none of those were what we wanted. So we went in the end with just a very simple web page, static website generated from GitHub pages. And basically for the uh, escape room bit of it, we just had kind of password protected links. Um, and for the infrastructure, we use Google Docs and Hackpads for brainstorming and coming up with ideas. And we put everything into a GitHub repository. And uh, we also built a kind of puzzle GitHub repository, uh, which you can find through the escape room. And uh, yeah, everything's published through GitHub pages, as I said. Uh, for our license, we use a Creative Commons license. We, uh, there's a link to the escape room here. All of our decisions are documented in GitHub issues. So all, the, all of the, the things we looked into are documented there. The readme uh, describes how to contribute to the project as well. We have a code of contact as well. And now finally, a very quick uh, demo. So here it is. So you start off uh, the classics department someone recommends you look into uh, the RSE group in your university. Um, so you go and check out the RSE office. Turns out that nobody is actually in, in the RSE office. Um, so you have to kind of look around, look at the cup of coffee that's on one of the tables. And there's kind of a, a hint that the passcode is the number of letters in API. So you try three, that doesn't work. So then you have to look up what API stands for. It turns out it's 31. 
because that's application programming interface. So that's that. Um, so, oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so we were we were just going to add more 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 puzzles to introduce more concepts, basically. So. Thank you Our so much. Steps. Okay.